Did you know that one third of all the food produced in this world for human consumption is wasted or just completely lost? That's around one trillion dollars just gone. In Africa, it's even more than that. Almost 40% is wasted and a lot of food is lost because they aren't stored properly or handled well. Imagine a fish farmer catching all that fish and just losing them. It's called post-harvest waste. Post-harvest loss is a loss that happens after you've done all the job and you have harvested your product or produce and therefore it's not a loss that should happen in the first place because you have already done all the hard work. Um, I met Francis in New York and is helping fish and poultry farmers to store the food that they harvest so that they can maximize more of what they've worked so hard for. Post-harvest loss happens mainly after harvesting the produce and as you take it to the market before it is consumed by the consumer or the customer. And your solar-powered refrigeration solution is trying to help cut this post-harvest loss by 25%. How are you trying to approach that? We are focusing mainly on the fish and the poultry value chain. Maybe more on the fish value chain. And what you're trying to do is to make sure that when fishermen harvest the fish, they don't end up selling the fish at throwaway prices because they, one, they don't have ready market, and two, they don't have a preservation method that can keep the fish at the optimum quality that can attract a premium price. So by doing that, we are providing a solution that can, really helps the fisher folk and, and, and also the fish farms uh, be able to get the best possible value for their products. Thanks to the Airshot Prize, every year, five people get one million pounds each for ideas that contribute towards a better environment and world. It was launched in 2020 by Prince William with the annual summit hosted by Bloomberg Philanthropies. Francis is one of the three finalists I spoke with this year and he shares the solution and how he also built a platform for it. Without further ado, let's get to it. My name is Francis Derito. I come from Kenya and I run a company called Keep It Cool. Yeah. Keep It Cool, as the name suggests, is a cooling as a service company that is making cooling affordable for underserved communities in Africa. Why would you say this idea is important for the world right now? The idea is important uh, for the world because we have huge uh, high post service losses, especially uh, in the part of where we come from uh, in Africa, okay. uh, because obviously there is uh, inadequate infrastructure uh, there is also some handling practices that were good for the world then, but not for today. So, for example, salting, uh, salting or drying of products as a way of preservation. Yeah. Um, so that, of course, has led to a lot of post service losses in today's world because the weather is also quite unpredictable or the climate is unpredictable. So it's an important intervention that you are trying to um, scale in Africa. Uh, in order to reduce these post service losses uh, across the continent. One thing he's doing is that in addition to storing their produce, he helped create a platform that can help fish and poultry farmers reach customers and sell more. Yeah, so um, when we went to the field, speaking to the fisher folks, speaking to farmers, um, we had this pre assumption that what they really needed was a preservation method. But the truth is, they actually need proper market access and uh, proper uh, go-to-market uh, mm -hmm. sort of channels. And cold chain only comes as a subsequent of lack of access to markets. And, and therefore, what we did was to come up with a blend where um, we guarantee off-take to the fisher folks and the producers. Uh, and then on the demand side, that's where now we install the solar freezer so that the women in the market can be able to store and sell at a slower pace and still have the same quality of produce that they can. So it was not necessarily supporting the farmers to access the cold chain, it is for the farmers to access the market access. And those who are not able to access the market access then also access storage, but also mainly to unlock this backlog where the uh, off-takers will not off-take as much because they didn't have preservation as well. So we end up deploying our cold chain solution not only on the produ producer side but also on the retailers and the hotels and restaurants side so that they can be able to off-take as much as possible from farmers. Yep. The idea is basically um, if farmer is doing his work, yes. he wants to, he's you know, catching fish, he, he wants to preserve it, you offer that solution. But in addition to that, you help them sort of find the market for their fish. For their fish or their poultry. Yeah. Yeah, and also store it in a more uh, way that it's preserved yes. better. Yes. 
Interesting. Um, do you plan to bring this idea anywhere else uh, apart from Kenya? <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, as you know, it's an it's a, a it's an, a very well known problem. Yeah. With uh, the solution being a little bit, uh, you know, expensive, mm. uh, because you all you need all these upfront costs, and here we are talking about a smallholder farmer who cannot be able to buy these expensive uh, equipments. So. Yeah, it's it's an it's um it's something that we intend to scale across different uh, African countries. Um, and we want to make sure that we are making cooling as affordable and accessible, uh, not only to the two value chains that you're working with, that is fish and poultry, and also extend it to other value chains uh, within the continent and also other parts of the world that may need this solution. What are some of those challenges you faced, like so far, even during this? How long has it been? Um, we've been operating for five years. Yeah. Obviously, the main one is access to capital because we're speaking about, um, you know, getting the equipment and then doing it as a service to, to, to this community so that they can be able to afford it. The biggest challenge has been financing that. Uh, secondly, of course, in a continent where there is so much segmentation, food practices in, let's say, Kenya is not the same food practices in Tanzania or food practices in other countries. And therefore, you have to not only um, uh, have some legal handles that you have to jump when you're trying to scale a company, but also uh, some challenges when also you're trying to uh, bring the equipment into that particular uh, country. So that has been an issue in terms of scaling the company in, in, in East Africa. And do you, like, how are you trying to solve for that? Like, are you actively working on that? Yes, we are actively working on that. So we have uh, certain support, let's say from uh, Rwanda government, where you go and speak to the government and you, sh you show them a uh, success story maybe in Kenya and you see the value of your work and of course they're willing to, to support you. Speaking but it of, has yeah. to be success story yeah. that you have to show. I was even going to ask, like speaking of success stories, like what are some of those success stories, if you can maybe share some yeah. of those? Yeah, so we have had quite a lot uh, in terms of people coming forward and saying, that um, you know, if I not for keep it cool, this is the, I'm, I'm successful because of this. So, for example, there is this woman who was was doing um, about 200 baths, and uh, because of keep it cool, uh, right now she's doing 2,000 baths. Uh, because not only did we provide her um, a stable um, optic and, and predictable optic, uh, we also uh, sort of give her the right sort of uh, support. We got uh, vet we have an in-house veterinary officer who, mm -hmm. who goes around supporting poultry farmers. So she has reduced completely the use of antibiotics. She has uh, grown her production capacity 10 times because mm -hmm. now this veterinary officer is able to come and uh, guide her on the best practices, uh, less use less feeds and maximize uh, feeds utilization, for example. And uh, by doing that, she has been uh, improved her productivity ten times. Yeah, that's yeah. that's the ten x from two hundred to yes, two thousand. Yes, yes. Somebody literally is ten x in their income. And yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's very cool. And I like that you mentioned like the in-house vets. Is this this is for poultry now specifically? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Um, we also have the same equivalent for fish, for so, fish. like a quality assurance officer who yeah. basically trains the fisher folks on the best practices of fish, fish preservation, etc. Oh, that's interesting. And I wanted to ask about like maybe upcoming projects or technologies that you are you know particularly excited about. Maybe the future of what yeah. you're doing. For the last two three years, I was excited about blockchain and what it it presents around uh, supply chains and the solutions that we have in terms of. Uh, traceability. At the moment, of course, um, coming from Africa where we have uh, lots of currencies and uh, making it almost impossible to do business, I'm excited about um, decentralized currencies like uh, Bitcoin and, and basically um, digital currencies, which will make business much easier for, for Africans. So I'm quite excited about that part because I know it will unlock a lot of uh, uh, business opportunities for, for people like us. So still on the question of the future, what are some maybe the dream partnerships that you would want to have, or like beneficial partnerships that you would want to have and that, that would you know, help you get to the next level of what you're trying to build? Yeah, so the whole purpose of working on Keep It Cool this hard and making sure that we have this infrastructure is to help the smallholder farmers and producers in, in that part of the world dealing with fish and poultry be able to export their produce to 
global markets. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the, the ideal uh, sort of partnership is where we can be able to bring Kenyan or Ugandan or African uh, produce to America and sell it, let's say, in Walmart or, uh, or in a leading uh, retail chain in, in this part of the world, or maybe Asia, uh, or maybe Middle East. Uh, those are some of the partnerships that we are currently exploring. For people who are watching this, part of the people who watch my channel also are interested in like personal finance, financing like their companies and things like that. What was the like? How did you manage to get the first maybe bout of funding, or maybe the grants from the beginning to the middle stage to to where you are now? To be honest, I started the company myself yeah. with my own uh, savings. And then uh, after maybe two or three months, I, I won a competition with African Development Bank. So they normally hold annual uh, competition for youth in Africa. Uh, and that's where I, I won my first uh, competition, which um, gave us about 10,000 uh, USD. And basically that's what was the, among the, the, the biggest check I'd received by then. And uh, that was our first investment. So it was through a validated competition and basically it created. They also did a lot of PR around it because we are like 20 African founders. Okay. And uh, basically we, uh, the next two months or so, I got approached by um, an angel investor who invested $20,000 and just like that continued building. Okay. Yeah. I think that's that's pretty much it for me. But is there yeah. anything else you want to add to this? Like, is there anything you feel like you want to say about the idea, about what you're building, and stuff that you know can maybe just inspire people in general? Yeah. So I um, I just want to tell people or your audience out there who are interested in starting something uh, that they should get it going. Uh, they should not wait. Um, even me, when I was starting this company, uh, I did not you know, sort of have second thoughts or, stick, or think too much about it. I just started and uh, so far it has worked. So I believe in, you know, just doing something and don't fear to make mistakes because, uh, you know, the, the, the formula is always high risk, high reward, mm. and therefore you should not uh, sit on your ideas. Essentially, just start. Just start. Thank you so much. Right. This was very interesting. Thank Pleasure. you. Yeah. Awesome.